the incident. I'm gonna take her statement in the coffee room. Okay, well, you know, we can talk at my desk. Between us, the downstairs coffee's better if you want John to get you some. No, thank you. He promised we'd be with her. You promised, Anya? He promised. So it's great she knows you're right out here. Please have a seat. One of the kittens at my work was doing bad last night after it gotten fixed. So I stayed petting her a while till I could get her asleep. And then when did you leave work on you? 9.15. And when I was waiting for the bus, three Spanish boys in big hooded jackets came up. I was hoping they'd pass by, but they grabbed me and told me if I made a noise, they'd kill me right there. And one put his jacket on me and tied the hood tight and low on my face. And then they started me walking between them and telling me, keep my head down and just look at the ground. Can you guess how long you walked on you? I tried to count seconds. Uh, one and two and... That was smart. But counting that way, I counted 16 and a half minutes. I, I heard a bunch of sounds, but they could have been from any street. But then, after 11 minutes, the one thing I know is we went through some construction. The sidewalk was dug out, and we were walking on sand for about 40 steps. That's really helpful that you paid attention to all that. Thank you. We walked up three flights in a building that the front door wasn't locked and then into an apartment that wasn't locked and had a mattress with no sheets that was dirty and nothing else in the apartment except Venetian blinds. They pulled down my underwear and pushed my skirt up and pushed my shirt and sweater up, covering my face and pushed my brassiere up and after 85 minutes two new men came in too. None of them said their names. They all smelled like beer. If I had stayed late working or not, or I should have known or not. You didn't do anything wrong, Anya. And what you just told me is really going to help. If I should have fought him no, no, or... There were three of them. And then there were five of them. If you'd have fought, they might have killed you. Can you tell my parents? They don't know yet about the sex part. There's every element. In the neighborhood where Anya works. And new elements every day. Is she all right? Why is the door closed? Anya's asked me to tell you more about what happened to her. More specific things about how she was attacked. Thank God she's all right. Oh, yeah, sure. she said she was. Anya was attacked sexually. And she had no opportunity to resist. Oh, my God. Which is why she's not bruised. We need to get Anya examined at a hospital. As upset as you are, you're going to want to be with her and support her. She said she wasn't hurt. She said she just wanted to report the incident. Donnie, good. I'm notified my uncle's missing. The investigating detectives are just on their way back. Um... Cancel with 10 o'clock. Tell Trevor I'll be there in an hour. You ever bump into a guy named Blake? From Louisville? What are you talking about? Well, 
He probably killed my uncle. I just thought at some point your flight paths might have crossed. Either of you two Sorensen? Me. Are you Donnie Good? Yeah, what's the story with my uncle? Well, like I said on the phone, your uncle's car is missing and there's some indication of foul play. We're hoping you can give us some background. This is my partner, Andy Sipowitz. How's it going, Sipowitz? But, I mean, nothing further? No, nothing further yet, Donnie, from the 20 minutes ago when my partner called you. Mr. Good was saying he thought his uncle had been killed by uh, Blake from Louisville. No kidding? Yeah, well, just guessing. Well, come here, Donnie, and fill us in. <clears throat> Who's Blake from Louisville? That guy's gay, right? <clears throat> Why? I'm just yanking his chain, asking him about Blake. Blake's another fag. I'm trying to remember taking a shine to somebody right off the bat, Donnie, like I am to you. I grow on people. Why would you say you thought Blake killed your uncle? Well, because Walter just broke up with Blake, and Walter said Blake was being pretty dramatic about it, and otherwise, Walter's life is pretty normal. You got other family, your uncle? Just me. He's got a nice place, your uncle. Nice taupe Mercedes that's missing. Hey, guys, I have my own consulting firm and 58,000 shares in the Magellan Growth Fund, and I don't need to kill anybody. You got an idea how we can reach out for this Blake? Blake DeWitt. I handled the kiss off. Don't throw things at us, or we'll throw things at you. Mi dispiace. Studying Italian. Blake moved, but I got his mommy's number in there. Hello? This is Danny, Mrs. DeWitt. I'm a buddy of your son Blake's up here in New York City. Well, I got some concert tickets that he might be interested in, but the number he wrote out for me ain't working. Did he move or something? Oh, yeah? Well, you got that new one for him? You guys are dogs. Shut your mouth. Oh, you're thinking of coming up from Lexington? Well, boy, I know Blake, he'd be glad to see you, but, you know, maybe you should give him a little time to get straight at his new place, and then he'll be more ready for guests. Anyhow, thanks an awful lot for the new phone number, Mrs. DeWitt. And yeah, take good care. Blake just relocated with a new roommate. You can trace his address off the phone number. And where can we find you, Donnie, if we get where we can stand to see you again? Your stockbrokers? See how politely I just hand this back to you? My stockbrokers, huh? After I go, explain they invented the internet. See you, gorgeous. Keep thinking you're straight. John, that, that crack you made, uh, were you, were you inferring that uh, this uh, Donnie inadvertently, uh, without his knowing it, uh, on your side? Please. <clears throat> Pick up this Blake. I was waiting like I do every day. It, they came from over there and turned me and walked me back the same way. You're positive about the direction? Well, even with making me stare at the ground, I'm 100% positive the direction we took. And I tried to keep regular count of the time. Feel like walking a while? And you want me to count exactly the same pace? Yeah, exactly the same. It, it was right. Not to let my parents come, right? Oh, you were right, Anya. This wouldn't have done your mom or dad any good. And it didn't happen to them? No. It happened to you. One, one thousand, two, one thousand, three, one thousand, four, one thousand. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Sit down. <clears throat> believe me or not, this is the first time in my entire life I've ever been in a police station. Why wouldn't we believe you? Well, good, because it's the truth. You got some idea what we want to talk to you about, Blake? Walter Good's car is missing. Well, if Walter's saying I took his car, that's an out and out lie. You got no idea where it's at? No, I don't. And if he's saying otherwise, Walter's out and out lying. When's the last you saw Walter? Three weeks ago. 23 days. You mark them off on your calendar? Yes. It's not just Walter's car, Blake. He's missing, too. Maybe, uh, 
Maybe Walter took his car himself, and then neither of them are missing. Took off on a little jaunt somewheres? Yeah, I mean, if that is what Walter did, it would have been the absolute best present in the world he could have given himself. And leaving that uh, little part of his head behind, that would be his absolute best farewell present to the parking garage floor. What are you saying? We think something bad might have happened to Walter, Blake. Oh, my God. Oh my God in heaven. Which his nephew says that you were pretty upset when Walter broke up with you. And we're wondering if uh, you were upset enough that uh, maybe it was you that separated that little part of his head that we found on the garage floor from the rest of Walter. I would never do anything to hurt Walter. Or his car. Or I hope any living creature. This is so terrible. This new guy, Philip, that you're living with, what's he think about Walter? Philip doesn't even know Walter. But you don't tell each other, like, war stories of uh, previous intimates? Well, uh, as far as that goes, um, in terms of his role in my life, Philip said that Walter was Satan incarnate. Philip said that, huh? I didn't know people was in here. You live on this floor? Yeah, down the hall. You hear anything going on in this apartment last night? Oh, last night? Uh, nah. Worldwide wrestling on the TV, you know? They play that stuff pretty loud. What's your name? Carlos Jimenez. Uh, can I go? Yeah, you can go, Carlos. Why? What went on in here? Go ahead, Carlos. He's a son of a bitch. Just stand there and lie. Was he one of them on you? He was the last one. Carlos. Uh, yeah, what do you want? I gotta get you for background on the comings and goings in that apartment. What do you mean you gotta get me? You gotta come to our station house and work with me on the trespassing going on. Yeah, but, but I don't pay that much attention. I cut my TV on loud. Yeah, well, if you want to get back here anytime tonight and be cutting it on loud, Carlos, you better come in with me, cooperative. Yeah, right. He didn't even recognize her. Not without her sweater over her head. Is he gonna be arrested? I don't get to that. Did I help you by not showing I was afraid? Welcome to the pokey. You got a little glum face in the O and a stick figure in what's intended to be the pokey. Did you draw that? Does it please you to know you cost a man his day's salary? Yeah, we're sorry about that. Well, that's more than adequate compensation. Does that peacock act drum up a lot of big gips for you, Phil, down there at the cafe? Well, what would you guess, detective? Top of my head, no. Well, since you'd never dined at the cafe, your opinion isn't really competent. Although the top of your head is very ample. You getting ready to go on a pudding diet, Phil? You mean you're about to knock my teeth out? Philip, Walter Good's gone missing. That used to be your boyfriend's lover. So are we organizing search teams? No, Phil. We're wondering if maybe you're who got him that way. Missing, you mean? Missing is what I mean. No. You don't know nothing about Mr. Good? I know that Mr. Good took a prurient pleasure in turning Blake out his country trade. I know his name confirms irony as a concept. And that's all I know that I'm willing to share with the two of you. How's it work, Phil? 
You feel you should be earning on one of them quiz shows with all this clever crap that you're getting off, and here we are wasting your time just because a guy that you had a motive to hurt got separated from some of his brain matter? I'm going to hurry matters along a bit, Detective. You have nowhere to go in your interrogation strategy other than physical force, at which point I'm immediately going to demand counsel. But you assume that I am going to run right out and get you instead of smacking you in the face. You're not willing to administer a beating more severe than I'm prepared to take while you're not positive I committed the crime. And at this point, I think both of you realize I'm not going to be responding to all these soulful, subliminal messages of support and understanding that your colleague here is sending my way so that he can exploit and get me to act against my own interests. I tell you all this because I'm hoping that I can make it back to the cafe in time to perform my peacock act for the late lunch crowd. So, Philip, don't be expecting Blake home anytime soon. And they say all the desaparecidos are in Argentina. Huh. I thought that was all the gauchos. You are a vulgar pig. And you see, that's the type of thing that makes you want to wink. Hey, Philip, any message you want us conveying to Blake? Yeah, because we got the impression that Blake looked to you as sort of a protector type. No. No message I want you conveying. Well, I'll tell him that you said that he's on his own. It's life in a big city, you know, getting jammed for something you didn't do. You tell him that I'm going to widen the loop. Widen the loop, huh? And do what? Stick your weenie through it? That guy's tough. What do you think, John? You saw the whole interview, right? I think he killed that other man. That's the easy part. How are we gonna catch him? Give me a chance. I'm new at this. Sure. Take all the time you need. John passes a remark, puts this asshole nephew we're talking to into total focus that he was himself a latent fruit. But we don't like the nephew for harming his uncle. The nephew we only like for being a spoiled jerk. It's just with Gay John passing this perceptive remark, then he gets the idea. You know, this is a gay murder, or whatever happened with this Miss and Walter. Why not have Gay John watch the interview with this other fruit, Philip? <clears throat> Anyways, we come out liking this Philip, but no real way to go at him. But John's got this idea how this Philip's probably gonna act. Off this Philip's gay thinking involving his gay boyfriend, Blake. Andy, I think we got everyone established as gay. <clears throat> Anyways, uh, it's risky. Where if anything goes wrong, you could wind up your suspect as representation, but I think you ought to listen to his thinking. Don't you agree? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I don't think he'd kill him for money. He'd do it because he couldn't get that other boy to hate him. Name's John. Philip, uh, Blake's present boyfriend, is so afraid of everything. L let me collect myself. See that about the Philip being afraid of everything, I don't necessarily subscribe to, because we were on this Philip pretty good, and, and he didn't give up nothing. But I, I still go with his overall idea. How about we let John say what his overall idea is? Absolutely. <clears throat> Philip, Blake's current boyfriend, uh, can't stand being compared to anyone. We don't have to start with the formation of the solar system. Sorry, I'm nervous. Uh, uh, John's overall point, Philip probably did away with this missing Walter, because Blake, that we've got in interview three, wouldn't hate Walter, even though Walter busted up with him. That's it. Which John thinks that this Philip is going to bring back a lawyer for Blake. I, I think that's what widening the loop meant. But this Blake ain't looking for representation. He wants Walter's disappearance solved. So he thinks that we should let Philip make his pitch to Blake about lawyering up. And when Blake turns him down, that's going to get Philip's nose open and we can go to work on him. How open do you think the lawyer standing next to him is going to let Philip's nose get? His point, protecting his own sick ass is going to be less important to Philip than getting Blake back on his team. If Blake don't want a lawyer, Philip sends the lawyer away. He needs to be the only thing in that boy's head. All right. If he comes back... Let's put them together. How's it going? Those women, the 
detectors are staring daggers. Don't worry about them. You and me are going to talk alone. Yeah. So does that mean uh, I should worry about you? You know what? You can take care of this right in here. Would you be more comfortable in here? Yeah, good. Keep me near the exit. Absolutely. You say this about trespassing in that open apartment. Yeah. You see anything going on there last night? Maybe some kids were around. No big deal. They come around a lot? Just sometimes. I hear them every once in a while. You got names? No. No? I don't want to get him in trouble. Or me in the middle of something. You want to get out of here in a timely fashion, I'm going to need names. I only know one of them from church. Eddie Felix. Eddie Felix. Yeah, you know, what happened is, I went out taking out the trash, and I heard him in there partying. And partying like drinking, drugs? No drugs, no. Girls? Like I'm a family man, okay? Married 18 years. Okay. If we can keep this between us. Sure. <sighs> I had a girl in the door and everyone. Is that right? Yeah, I'm taking out the trash and I see this Eddie, who I barely know. He says, hey, Carlos, you want to put a hump on this girl? <laughs> now, family man or not, we all got urges, right? Mm -hmm. now, my wife and kids are in her apartment watching TV. Yeah, I'm taking out the trash. It's a boring night. Who would ever guess something exciting's happening? Right next door. Anyways, uh, I went in there and put a hump on the girl like Eddie suggested. The girl seemed like she was enjoying herself, Carlos. Mm, she's kind of tired. Been with four of them already. Fifth man in. I figured, why is one more gonna matter? You got where Eddie lives? And I go? Write down Eddie's address and write down what you just told me. Then we'll see if you can go. Fifth man in, right? What the hell? Yeah, what the hell? My name's Daryl Lyman. I'm an attorney. Um, I just speak to him. Blake Stewart. How's it going? I'm Danny Sorensen. I'm working that case. He's Abbott. That's Costello. I'd like to see my client, please. Yeah, Mr. DeWitt's turned down his right to a lawyer. He's manipulating sons of bitches. Would that be Peter Pot calling Carl Kettle Black? I'd like to hear Mr. DeWitt decline. Uh, sure, okay. I guess that's okay. He's not that Blake's lawyer. You don't have to let him hear nothing. No, it's okay. He's down here. Whoa, hey. Ixnay and Owen with them, gay, Phil. Yeah, this is just Mr. Lyman hearing him decline. Fine. Great. Just tell him I'm here. This is Mr. Lyman. He's a lawyer. And you really need an attorney, Blake. Hey. Have you waived your right to counsel? Yes. I want to be any help I can in solving Walter's disappearance. Blake, if I can just... You heard it, counselor. Let's go. I'm pleased to meet you. What's the baseball look like this year, Phil? You follow the Yankees, the Mets? Just my favorite gay players. How is he? Did you tell him I'm here? Blake seems all right, and he has declined counsel, Philip. Did they beat him? I hope to hell you laid on the makeup. He doesn't seem like he's been beaten, although I didn't get that close a look. Why not? Blake has declined representation, Philip. Uh, that's the fun for you, isn't it? Twisting people's heads around. I said he's got no hard feelings. I guess when they were together, this Walter showed him a pretty good time. Yes, Walter had deep pockets and an evil mind. All right, Philip. He's going over their life, who they met and so forth, trying to help us come up with leads. Anyway, I don't think either of us has a good reason to stay here right now. If uh, he changes his mind, please give this to Mr. DeWitt. Sure, absolutely. I want to talk to him. Let's get a cup of coffee, Philip. No. Can I talk to him? I mean, we'd need more cooperation than our last talk, Philip. Some prior conversation with us before we could let you talk to Blake. I am of counsel to Philip Rogers, and that's not going to happen. I talk to you. If you promise, in front of these witnesses, subsequently, I can talk to Blake. You don't think they can get inside your head, too, Philip? Well, that's a challenge I think I'm equal to. Do I need to say something to make this official? You're fired gets it done. You're fired. Well, I... You're fired! Let's go talk down here. What have you got Blake thinking about me? Did Phil get the idea he was going to be interviewing us? I mean, if he's turning down representation, I can only imagine what you've got him thinking. You'll get all that from Blake firsthand after we have our talk. 
Yes, and I expect Blake and I will be riding then in a handsome cab, probably in the botanical gardens. You know you're not getting out of here, don't you, Philip? You know you're going to give it up. Detective, don't you think you'd be more within your comfort zone probing the psyche of chimps? You're going to give it up so you can hold Blake in your arms. Boo hoo hoo. And tell him you love and wish him happiness. Boo hoo hoo. And will he write you long letters in prison? Uh, I want to see him. Philip, the great running back, O.J. Simpson, that was found not guilty by a jury of his peers. When he come back from Chicago, before he went in to be interviewed by the L.A. detectives, the great Simpson dismissed counsel exactly how you did. And Phil, so you know where you stand. If the great Simpson had gone in with me, after witnesses heard him let his lawyers go, that murder and prick's only chance of walking out of that interview room before I got his confession would have been an earthquake. Which I gather sometimes does occur in that area. Give it up. Why don't you go on to the beating? No one's looking to do that, Philip. Nobody wants to beat you. Oh, that's a crock, isn't it? You'd love to beat me. No. Isn't that your version of sex? Nobody wants to beat you. Isn't that what you'd have done to the great Simpson? I'd have told him that when his ex-wife died and that poor waiter that was in the wrong place at the wrong time was the night weeks before when he come to talk to her and their kids were asleep upstairs and through the window he sees her going down on whoever that was that she had on the living room sofa. People's passions get the best of them, Philip. And if he goes over, maybe two weeks later, and he's had too much to drink like I have 5,000 times or he's, he's put something up his nose and he's got it in his head that he's going to do vandalism on her car. And that's all he's planning to do. That's all he went over intending to do. He's just planning on putting a dent in a Mercedes the color of which someone should have had the taste not to conceive to begin with. Something's in front of him he hadn't expected. That kills kindness and sweetness and pity. And all that emotion just explodes. It just explodes! It explodes! I put a hammer two inches into his head. I'm afraid to hammer a nail. And a minute before, if you told him he was going to do it, he'd have taken any bets against that you wanted to make. I need to come home. How's it going with the case? It's going well, Mr. Webb. One man's in custody, and he gave us the name of one of the other perpetrators. Anya's looking at photos of that perpetrator's running buddies, trying to identify the other three men who assaulted her. Anyway, we think it's time for her to come home. I think Anya wants to spend more time going through photos to see if she can identify the other three men. She wants to, or you're making her. We do feel it's uh, somewhat time for her to come home. Well, I guess it's what Anya feels that we're going to have to go by. Do you want to come talk to her? We want you to let her come home. Mrs. Webb, this terrible thing has happened to your daughter, and she's found a way to feel like she's getting a little control of her life back. Of course, Anya can go home. But if she wants to stay, can't you be brave enough to let her? I think we should let her somewhat, Janet, if she wants to. And then you'd arrange for her transportation home? Yeah, we'd bring Anya home. Police transportation. I guess that's as safe as you can get. Fine, then. It's a fine way to end it. End what? We brought her in this morning, and now we can't get her out. Come here. I want to stay, Mama. Fine, then. I'm fine. You and Daddy go home. Okay? So she's alone. With every element. Yeah, she's all alone with Detective Jones.
You'll see she gets home. 